Pipe Network presents. On this episode of Season 4, Let's Talk. Martial arts is how you make up. Is it? Whatever your output, your expression will always be based on, what, on your purpose. Right? It'll always be, it will always depend on your purpose. Do you want to be, you know, do you want to be, how do you want to be perceived? How do you want to market yourself? Hey folks, welcome back to The Rajiv Show and I'm your host Rajiv Doreswami and this show aims to help reach out to those who are currently struggling in life and to remind you that life is indeed beautiful when you're inspired to make it your own. Folks, uh, my guest today is one of the greatest uh, guests that I've ever, this is one of my exciting guests to ever welcome to The Rajiv Show. First of all, he is a martial artist, um, amazing person, personality, down to earth. Uh, coach Franco R- Ruluda. Hey, Coach, yes. how you doing? <laughs> yes, yes. What's up? What's up, Rajiv? Again, uh, I love being here. Thank you for having me over, and uh, let's do this. Let's do awesome. this. Super excited to be here. Awesome. Super excited. Awesome. For for the listeners who who haven't met Coach. Uh, Coach, could you give us a little bit of background about you? Uh, that is probably one of the more difficult questions I have to answer now. Because I, I, we're, we're living in a world where people are put into boxes and they're put into niches. Ako, yeah. Admittedly, I do a lot of things. So, for context and for everyone, for the benefit of the people who are gonna who's gonna listen and watch and listen to this episode, uh, I'm a martial artist. So, I've trained and fought in boxing and Muay Thai and kickboxing and wrestling, a little bit of judo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and uh, that's taken a huge chunk of my life. Uh, I do fitness coaching. I do business consultancy. I I'm a travel writer, and I'm a food review. Pe- and I I also do reviews for food. I mean, now I'm a podcaster. I started my own podcast like two two and a half years ago, and um, everything that I'm doing led to me being here on the Rajiv Show. Awesome. <laughs> As Coach mentioned, we got a lot of martial arts here. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that later on. Uh, my first mm-hmm. question, Coach, I gotta ask. This is of course a question that yes. I ask my fellow fire people away, that I speak bro. to. Fire away. Mm-hmm. If you and I were classmates in high school, who were you in high school? I am the average student. I am the normal guy. I wasn't a jock. I wasn't. Um, I wasn't the athlete. I wasn't the nerd. I, I was. I was. Di ako. Puti na lang hindi ako. Di naman ako patay na bata. Uh. Um, I had. I had. I met uh, amazing people throughout high school. I think a huge chunk of the confidence and the personality that I have today is um, hugely attributed. Because of the people that I met during high school, especially, um, I think it was the last year of elementary and then towards my high school years. I think a huge chunk of who I am was uh, was formulated or was uh, molded during high school. Nagkataon lang na napaparkada ako with with a good crowd, and they gave me a lot of the influences and a lot of the things na, that that put me together so ayun um but other than that i was i was an average student i was a normal guy you know I, that was me during high school i had my fair share of of embarrassing moments i've had accomplishments i've had uh, i've had a lot of uh during my elementary and early high school years i got bullied mm. so and yeah so these are the experiences that I carry with me and I learn from them. Interesting. 
I never I never expect this right off the bat. <laughs> you being bullied. I can't even picture that. Oh, like. man. Oh. Um, it's a huge reason why I gravitated towards martial arts is because I was ah, a bullied okay. kid. Interesting. I, I was a small I was a small chubby guy, so it was easy to pick on me. Oh. Yeah, then I'm thankful for the people that I met during high school because uh yung naging barkada ko nga, they oh. were like they weren't they weren't arrogant, pero huh. they were the crowd that you wouldn't want to mess with. Oh. So I learned a lot from them in terms of uh, self-confidence, uh, believing in yourself, not taking shit from anybody. Because huh. when nung napasama na ako sa barkada na yon, I wasn't bullied anymore. I wasn't. I, I, parang kumbaga, in the prison system, napasama ako sa barkada na nobody wants to mess with. So parang ano nice. na yon, na parang I got associated with them. So <laughs> I, I got. I, I wasn't picked on anymore. Interesting, so, interesting. Tapos yung the attitude of the like the leaders of that group dropped off on me. So parang ako mm. okay. That's when I started to realize na parang okay the dynamics in the dynamics of bullying. Uh, you you're not gonna get bullied if you don't allow them to bully you. Ooh. Kaya kahit na anong sabihin ng kahit na sinong experto jan about bullying. Mm. When people talk to me about bullying, I always say you have to fight back. You have to fight back. Even if you get beaten up, you have to fight back. Because the mere fact that you reacted and you fought back, mm. whoever bullied you is gonna think twice before doing it again. Because they know you're gonna retaliate. They, they know that you're gonna fight back. Bullies don't like people who fight back. Interesting. So that, yun yung, uh, I mean, from and that's from my personal experience. It's not from a book. It's not from someone else's story. It was my story. Wow, and uh, I I like how you connect high school and uh, bullying. It somewhat rem- reminded me of the Conor McGregor kind of uh, thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pero ano kasi, uh, bullying is everywhere. It's it's not just in school. There are a lot. There's a lot of bullying in the workplace. There's a lot mm-hmm. of bullying in the family. There's a lot of bullying and social. Eh, basta basta merong social dynamic or merong group dynamic. There will always be a bully. Interesting, interesting. I, I want to get into the next question, which is, of course, related yes. to you mentioned, and that is, uh, who is your greatest motivator and why? I presume it will be Bruce Lee, but I have a feeling I'm. Ano to, in martial arts or in life? In life, in life. In life, okay. Yes. It has to be my mom. Oh. It's definitely my mom, hands down, number one. When uh, I, I say this in all the, in all the interviews or even in casual conversations, when people ask. Me or my brother, I don't know, who, what, who, or what is the secret to our success and achievements? Uh, hands down, it's our mom, it's our mother. Uh, our mom is very hardworking. She's very inspirational. She, telling you, you're, you're a career woman. You take mm. care of your family. You provide for them, and then you have to deal with two fighters in the family. Oh. <laughs> uh, when when mothers, diba, she's my my mom. My mom is very tough. She's very strong, mm. uh, and she's very remarkable in the sense that uh, when when she talks with her fellow titas, diba, titas mm. of Manila na yung barkada niya na, yun nga, parang, um, when they talk about their children, parang, uh, when they ask, oh, what does your child, oh, what what does your son, what does your daughter do? Na, parang, oh yeah, they're into computer games. Yes, into sports, the basketball. That other guys into. Ayan, wala, iba, tamad. Diba? But then, tinanong siya, oh, yeah, my, my children, my, my boys fight for, ano, I fight for a hobby. And, ano yun, parang, every time that we go to a tournament, every time we, we go on a tournament, or we, we have, we have, we have, a, we have a match, or we have, ano, meron kaming laban. Hmm. Alam mo yun, I, I could just imagine, parang late, late ko na lang din na-realize na parang every time we step out of the door, which probably we give my mom like that certain amount of worry kasi syempre we're into combat sports. It's, hmm. it's not like any other sport na, na, I mean, you can you can get hurt. I mean, you will get hurt. Hmm. Right? It's just a matter of how much hurt are you gonna be? How much damage are you 
how much damage are you gonna get yourself into. So, alam mo yun, she she's been with us. She's been very supportive. And ano yan, uh, I can't say anything. I can't say anything. I mean, we could go on, go on about hmm. about how how amazing my mom is. But oh, yeah, she's the secret to our success. Interesting. Same here. I'm a, I'm also mama's boy. Would you like to give a shout out to mom if ever she tunes into this episode by any chance? <laughs> oh no! Tell you to, to all mama's boys, we are amazing. Uh, a lot of fighters. A lot of fighters. A lot of uh, strong men. Okay? Uh, whether they admit it or not, uh, they're all mama's boys. Majority yeah. of them are mama's boys. Uh, awesome. Interesting. I love the opening here. We got a lot of stuff to cover here, but I just love the opening. It's so powerful. And um, I'm going to take a, a, an approach to towards the present time now. My next question mm-hmm. is, of course, um, if today was yesterday, what would you keep and what would mm-hmm. you let go of? If there is anything that that uh, you, you'd think about... I wouldn't that let go like, of anything. I, I, I wouldn't let go of anything because everything that happened to me uh, molded me to who I am. Mm. Uh, everything good, everything bad, everything stupid. You mm. <laughs> uh, let go of uh, bad choices with women, uh, stupid oh. relationships. Yeah, probably let go of that. But in the end, because it made me realize a lot of things about human beings. But uh, what would I keep? Definitely my my love for life, my passion for whatever I do, and uh, my family. Wow. And um, we're going to get a little bit uh, f- towards the future now. Uh, this is, of course, uh, the question is, uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, this is a two-part. This is a one question that's separated yeah. into two parts. One is, what is what are your thoughts for your future? And, of course, what are your thoughts for the future with the times are changing now with everything changing? You can answer well, which one will suit okay. you better. Uh, everything, everything, everything that we're doing now, everything that we're doing now will definitely affect our future. Okay. There's there's one thing I realized with life. You yeah. have to learn from your past hmm. live your present in preparation for your future. Hmm. And my future is all about getting better, uh, living a lasting legacy. And I'm really, really working on uh, improving myself every every day. Mm. Uh, so it would hopefully be a good provider for my future family. Mm. That's what I'm putting the work on. Say, uh, but yeah, you have to get better each day. You have to mm. wake up with a purpose. So yeah, uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing my best to like learn as much as I can. Uh, I'm thinking uh, one thing about this whole quarantine is give me enough time to rest give me enough time to recover and then it's giving me the opportunity to upskill mm. uh, it's giving me the opportunity to learn new things uh, improve on the things that I already know or I haven't haven't delved into like, like had a deep dive into certain Especially with the business stuff. So yeah, uh, it's it's enough. So when you when you wake up with a sense of purpose, you'll realize how how short, how much, how many clean hours. Interesting, coach. I gotta ask. Of course, as a martial artist, is there any particular uh, philosophy that that has been static all throughout your life like something that you've learned uh, when you were young papasok. yeah the, that's yung, papasok yung, yung martial arts influence go which is hmm. I think very very common answer again uh, with with all martial artists is Bruce Lee so yeah. I've always adhered to the concept of um, what is useful disregard what is useless Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, very it's, simple. Uh, it's a very, it's a very simple. It's a very simple but famous and powerful quote by uh, Bruce Lee. It's uh, it's written in his book, The Tao of Shun Do. That's the concept of the entire uh, martial arts system. Uh, you 
keep what is useful and then you disregard what is useless. Mm. Okay. It's interesting. It's interesting stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Folks, we'll be right back. This episode is sponsored by Dulce House, the online shop for your guilty pleasure. Use the promo code PIPE to buy chocolate chip cookies, Oreo cheesecake cookies, and other baking goodies. The promo code is P-I-P-E. Go to the link in the description to find out more. Catch the Pissar Tales weekly as we tackle issues about education and share experiences about teaching. Hosted by Jay Australia, available on your favorite podcast platforms. Folks, welcome back to the Rajiv Show. And this episode has been amazing. From the beginning, of course, we, we went straight into the Kung Fu and the mixed martial arts in this conversation. And of course, we're going to continue this conversation with, of course, my favorite topic, which is, of course, the Art Talk segment. And um, as, as Coach mentioned from the beginning, he's a martial artist. I got to ask, what is the prime definition why is it called martial art? That that's one thing that's always been in my head when it comes to the idea of martial art. Uh, we're gonna go back to another another Bruce Lee quote or another Bruce Lee ideology when it comes to martial arts. Um, he said, "Nah," and I. This is something that I believe and practice every day. Hmm. Uh, martial arts is the honest expression of your humanity. Okay? It's the it's the most honest of human expressions. Hmm. I think that's how he put it, and that is, that is very true. Because uh, when you practice martial arts, when you do martial arts, hmm. you cannot fake movement. You cannot fake anything. So. And martial arts also allows you to express yourself through movement. There are a lot of things that people cannot express by words. They mm. cannot express their thoughts, their feelings. But mm. we can express it through movement. That's why. That's why the art scene. That's why. That's, that's the main reason why there's art. That's why we have writers. That's why we have mm. actors. That's why we have uh, dancers. That's why we have uh, sports people. You say. Yeah. And I mean the the, the the concept holds true. We we have to have an outlet to express ourselves in the most honest way. And if you don't have a hobby, you don't have anything in particular to have or if you don't have an outlet, hmm. right? that's just sad. <laughs> right? You gotta find one. There's always hmm. there's there's one for everybody. I truly hmm. believe that. There's one outlet for everybody. So, when it comes to martial arts, you know, uh, it's the for me, uh, for me as a martial artist, it's mm. the most honest way of expressing humanity. It's, it's. I mean, you cannot fake anything when it comes to martial arts. It's mm. either you got it or you don't. It's either you can do it or you can't. Mm. So you know, you know, you know, that's the best definition of martial arts for me. Interesting. If you don't want to believe me, you can you just go to Google. Na lang. <laughs> Google mo na lang yung definition of martial arts. Then you can go in more. But as a martial, from a martial arts perspective, that is my definition. That's the definition that works for me. Uh, the, the follow-up question to that is, of course, uh, as a in, in, in form of outlets, how does it define the similarities of um, being, uh, like you mentioned, uh, artists, musicians, when when artists and musicians they come up with outputs of artistic uh, content, you know, mm-hmm. they have they have pieces, you know, artists they'll have yep. paintings on canvas. How does that uh, transcribe into the idea of um, martial arts being a form of the output? Basically, how do you see it as an output? That's that's one thing that's uh, yeah. Okay, so the output of martial artists is the visualization, the visual movement that you see. Hmm. So when, when boxers climb the ring, that's art. When kickboxers fight, when white eye uh, fighters get into the ring and 
they duke it out when mixed martial arts fighters get inside the cage. That's art. That's the output. Uh, mm. It's the accumulate. It's the it's the culmination of the training. It's the it's the everything leads to that point in their lives wherein they had to deliver. It's the uh, it's the pinnacle of all the trainings and preparations. So we can say in the martial arts is, is we can ca- sub categorize it as a performing arts. So the mm. performance is the is the output. So you know ano niya. So when you want to see like the for example, a whole uh, a huge chunk of my life is been in the world of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So my output is my accomplishments in tournaments, mm. my, expression, my expression of my Jiu-Jitsu, mm. the way I channel my Jiu-Jitsu to, to pass on the lessons to my students. That's mm. output. Interesting. I, I like how the depth of arts is, uh, martial arts is uh, saying. And um, uh, in, in terms of uh, creativity, I, I, I want to ask a personal uh, question first before that. Uh, is that in, in terms of a uh, uh, personal question, is that once you get into once you get into the fight, like you're 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 in it and you're already there and you're facing mm. your opponent, mm. do uh, do you have a particular mantra when you go before the fight? You know, is, you know, do you have some certain uh... certain rituals? Oh uh, yeah, uh, there are people. I've known fighters that don't have rituals, mm. but a vast majority of fighters have rituals. Uh, mm. You don't get to see it. Siempre kasi it goes behind the scenes. Pero ako, my ritual is or has always been, um, especially if it's in a venue, uh, maingay yung tao, marami tao. Mm. I find a I find a quiet spot wherein I just stay there. I want to be quiet. I want to. I want to calm myself, try to be relaxed, and then I take myself to a place wherein I could, I could like make myself synchronized so that when it's time to go up in the ring or go inside the cage, I jo, hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm very comfortable, very calm, especially when it comes to the jiu-jitsu matches na, uh, I've fought in whether local or especially say, international uh, touring events. Mm. I always find a quiet spot in the bay, stay there. Then when my name is called or my division is called, you know, mm. that's where I start my approach. Uh, the mental process, the uh, is I do my best to shut everything down. Mm. I, I drown the noise and then I just want to be quiet. I want to be in a state, it's called a flow state. Hmm. I want to be in a state of flow wherein <clears throat> my my instincts will take over. So the moment your instincts take over, you flip you you've already turned on your switch. Okay? Every hmm. fighter has a switch. So the moment you turn on that switch, nothing else matters now. Uh, nothing. The crowd, uh, the cheers, the cheers, the the venue. Uh, hmm. voila. And you you drown the noise with with. Uh, with a huge calm, with a huge sense of calm, that the only voice you can hear are the voices of your coaches. So that's what uh, hmm. goes through my processing. Interesting. And then, um, how about uh, pre-matches? Do you uh, are you the guy? Are you the guy who uh, you know gets inside your opponent's head or like Conor McGregor? Are you are you the silent? No, type? no, I've never, I've never done the Conor thing. That's actually a smart tactic, but I've never done that. Uh, the one that does that is my brother, my younger oh, brother. Yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. Ako, yeah. Uh, ako, I was the, I'm the quiet guy. Uh, I'm the guy who doesn't do do any talking. I don't post anything on social media. I don't. I don't post anything about myself, my training, or my opponent. Hmm. Uh, you, 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 you'll find everything out during fight day. Hmm. Yeah. So, it's more like keep your. It's like keep your mouth in in the bag and then take it out when you when oh, it's time to something like uh, that. I, don't, I think I'm the guy who lets his fist do the talking. Yeah, I was the guy who lets his fight do the talking for him. So I, I, I'm, 
not good. I, I don't I don't like the trash talking. I don't really I could do it, pero it's not worth I, the it's thing. Not, it's, it's not. Hindi naman. It's not just my thing. It's just not my thing. Ah, okay. Oh, it goes with a person's uh, personality. Uh, I, oh, uh, no. Uh, like for example, let's take into consideration Conor McGregor. Conor, hmm. Conor McGregor exudes that level of self-confidence. He channels hmm. that self-confidence into creating a character of arrogance. He's ah, interesting. Not a bad guy. He's not a bad guy. He's just creating this persona. So now, since he created this persona, people will either love him or hate him. People will pay to either watch him win, but more people will pay to watch him lose because he's an arrogant son of a bitch. Huh. Uh, he's the classy, he's the he's the taunting guy during media tours. But huh. that's not him. He built that character. Oh, so and it he, has. He was, Interesting. So he's very successful with it. He's a very he was very successful with that character. It, it provided him with millions of dollars. So Conor McGregor, the person, is a good person. Conor McGregor, the person, is totally different from Conor McGregor, the, the person fighter. you see in in, the, in inside the cage or the fighter or the no, yeah, the media tours. Yeah. Wow. You you just open up a, a a box there that I didn't expect. I did not know that arts, uh, martial arts, has something to do with theater, character, character wise. Yeah. Uh, martial or arts that's is just martial arts. It's, it's, martial arts is how you make up. Is whatever your output, your expression will oh. always be based on what, on your purpose. Uh, it okay. Be, it will always depend on your purpose. Do you want to be how do you want to be? How do you want to be perceived? How do you want to market yourself? Mm. Uh, it's an entire thing. Like, um, Manny Pacquiao is the soft-spoken boxing world champion that has earned, but he's earned his way into beating people and beating high-level fighters and yeah. um, never backing down on anybody. Yeah. At the same time, see si Floyd Mayweather. Naman. Floyd Mayweather won a lot of boxing matches, but he's more known because of his trash talk, because yeah. of his, diba? because he needed to do those things in order to sell fights. Not sell fights because he was he was going toe to toe with people. See si Floyd Mayweather. People, Floyd Mayweather did the same thing. Same pinopia ni McGregor. Floyd Mayweather created a character that people hated, so that they what they paid to watch him lose. But he's really he's a very skilled boxer, so he keeps winning, mm. and he knows how to he knows how to use the rules to his advantage. Kaya hanggang ngayon wala pa siyang talo. Mm. So everything is all about the purpose. It's all about how do you want it, how you want to use it. Wow. I, I love how this how martial arts is connected to person's personality I I, I love that the, 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 this perspective opened my eyes to to arts and in, in, in its generality because the word art mm-hmm. can not just mean painting and then drawing it, it opens up a huge paradigm of a lot of things you, you got mixed martial well, arts making I think and it's e- really interesting even if you even if you look at the definition of art, I think a huge chunk of the definition behind art mm. is expression. Mm. True, so true. everything that has to do with expression is art. Uh, so from there, you can subcategorize it or you can chop it down to different aspects or different ideologies. And, uh, this, this dynamic is really, this, this conversation is blowing my mind now. <laughs> And um, mixed martial arts, I gotta ask, um, is it a compulsory um, nature of uh, a person who's competing in the field has the need to, to learn all the other art forms? You know, you mentioned jujitsu and uh, the uh, others. When it, comes to, when it comes to martial arts, martial arts is, can be broken down into two major uh, competencies. So you have to have your striking component and you have to have your grappling component. Mm. Now, so striking component, you can learn whatever striking art you want to you want to learn. You can just learn one, you can learn two to three, 
different uh, grappling art naman you can just decide you, you can choose one you can choose two to three systems now when it comes to mixed martial arts the reason why it's called mixed martial arts is now you bring everything together you bring all the things that you train okay put them together and use it in succession based on how you need it or based on um based on what the situation gives you or provides you hmm. so we see mixed martial arts mixed martial arts is uh yeah okay, this is a very unpopular opinion eh? that's why for me mixed martial arts is should not be taught as a class hmm. say mixed martial arts is a combination of several martial arts so you hmm. have to be proficient with with certain martial arts and then when it comes to mma training you bring them all together. So for example, if you want to conduct an MMA class, you have to make sure na meron ng certain level of proficiency yung mga participants mo. Walang magsisimula from zero. Kasi, ano yun eh, you're gonna produce half big students. Mm. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. And how... Oh, wow, <laughs> I I don't know what to follow up with that. That blew my mind. Wow. Uh, I gotta I gotta ask. You mentioned also you you mm. you, you also do entrepreneurship. Um, from the entrepreneurship mm-hmm. side, how do you apply everything that you learned in in terms of uh, martial arts? How the, the that's uh, uh, how does that apply in your thing? Do you have the same habits that about, you have? Mm, the discipline. I, the best thing about learning martial arts is a lot of the concepts that you learn in martial arts can be applied in real life. So, mm. for obvious reasons, it's discipline, it's mm. dedication, it's consistency. Mm. Uh, you can apply this to your relationships with people, to your okay. personal relationships. Oh, no man. So, let's talk about discipline, dedication, consistency. Yun lang muna tatlong yan. Discipline, right. dedication, consistency. If you want to have a successful career in any career that you want, you have to have discipline, you have to have consistency, you have to have patience. You have to have... Ano ko may sinabi kong isang kanina? Tama. So, yeah. dedication, consistency, patience. So, it comes to your personal relationships, whether it be your family or your significant other. You have to have discipline, consistency, and patience. So, there are a lot of things na that that you learn in martial arts that can be definite that can definitely be applied in real life and you should apply in real life because we live in a world where in especially now the tone mm. of the age of social media yeah. everyone's all about instant gratification we get affected by the things we see on our screens yeah uh People are triggered so many. I mean, by, by the littlest of things. Yeah. People get That's the sad, sad by. Diba? People get sad. People are affected emotionally by the minutest of things, because we are. Diba? We we try to think that what happens on screen is real life. That we forget mm-hmm. to experience real life, in real life. Being <laughs> in the we moment. We forget to experience. Oh yeah, diba? you 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 stop being in the moment because you think that. Whatever happens on social media is your reality, or that's that's what people perceive you, mm. you know, which is which is bullshit. Because it's not true. So ayon, um, martial arts brings you back to reality. It puts everything into context. It helps you deal with reality on a daily basis. So definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's siguro. I don't really. I'm not affected by what's happening on my social media channels simply because mm. man, they don't matter. Mm. They don't. But I'm pretty sure that the guy, whoever makes a comment, sends me stupid messages, mm. I'm pretty sure they're not gonna. They're, they can't say it in front of my face. Yeah, <laughs> one way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Diba? <laughs> yun, diba? If you can't, if you can't say, diba? if you can't say something. And prove something. Someone's face. Yeah. Yeah. Diba? Yeah. Yung, diba? I do agree. I do agree. It's provided us. Diba? It provided us with a smoke screen or a wall that would allow us to say a lot of things that we can't say in real life. So, diba? yun yung, now, if people just had that mindset now, okay, 
Mm. But I'm pretty sure this person can't say this in front of my face, so I should be affected by this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, and, uh, wow, it's yeah. A lot of similar uh, similar thoughts that you have, and I I I never thought about this after this conversation. I've never really thought about it that you and I had uh, a, a much more similar path in life because um, in, in my life, in my personal life, um, uh, when I grew up here in in the Philippines, I, I was bullied as well. But for me, in my my defense, uh, in my my story is I I'm, I grew up a skinny guy, and. Um, And I had my fair share of um, saying, uh, being bullied, and it, it, it's interesting. When you said you were bullied, it, it no, 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 no. when when it comes to bullies, then I'm gonna say one thing you have to understand is bullies bully people because they're trying to hide their insecurities. That's true. That's true. I would, yeah, I agree uh, with that. So now, so now, um, they're trying to take it out on you because they think that they can mess with you or they think that they can overpower you now you go uh, you're you're a foreigner you're a skinny guy living in the Philippines you're, you're but actually you're I'm born here <laughs> I'm, I'm actually ah, born, born here, here yeah yes okay <laughs> yeah. so say that you're a skinny guy so since you're a skinny guy you're a small dude it's easy yeah. to on you now right? it's gonna happen it will yeah. happen now mm. it's just a matter of up to one point that you're gonna allow it to happen yeah it's true it, it's all about taking eh, thing taking it it's you you decide to talk back or you decide to fight back yeah now it could either escalate to something not so nice or it could escalate to a point where it they will stop now, yeah that's the fork in your life right? mm. it's the fork in your life As it is nga ngayon, ang pinaka-bullying ngayon sa social media na nangyayari. Yeah, that's true. Diba? Lalo yung yeah. social media or in social circles na people will think of you weird. Uh, they will have a different perception of you. They the will trolls judge you based stuff. on... Uh, pero ito nga yun eh. Trolls, diba? They can't yeah. do anything to you. They're, <laughs> yeah. they're an image on the screen. They're, yeah. they're, they're a bunch of... I've written words that you yeah. see on your phone or diba? they can't, they can't in as much as it affects your psychology mm. it cannot affect you physically one thing that I one thing that martial arts will teach people is sabi nila ang pangit mo or para bang kumuha kang katulo or para bang yung itsura mo pang lupa or kung anong diba walang Well, 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 I was a trash talk mindset there. Eh. Pero yun nga, di ba? Mm. They could say all these negative things to you. Yeah. Pero ako pa si, I go to a gym every day where if people can choke me out, can break my bones, can can, can just like anything can happen. Damage to me. Yeah. Di ba? Anything can happen at any particular time. Yeah. That one, that physical manifestation, that hurts. That's actual hurt. Okay. Getting punched in the face. Is actual hurt. Getting submitted during a jiu-jitsu match, getting yeah. choked out, getting your your limbs uh, manipulated, stretched in out. Na it's very uncomfortable. Yeah. That's actual hurt. So yeah. if that thing is, if those things can actually hurt me and I can feel actual physical pain, mm. why would words in front of a screen bother me? Mm. Uh, that made me think interesting diba? and ito lang din naman yan eh. a lot of people in the advent of social media hmm. they, they're not held accountable for their words that's true that's true especially oh, when you face them yeah. oh diba so so kung ganun yung reality ng buhay why would I be affected by that why would I be affected by what people think of me and As cliche-ish as it may sound, no. ito lang yan eh. The best revenge or the best way to prove people wrong is to be successful. Mm. Um, it's easier said than done, pero that's the way to go. Diba? You want to get out of... If, 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 diba? You can opt not to believe what people perceive of you. Yeah. Then how do you prove them wrong? You become successful. You become successful at what you do. I do agree with diba? that. At the end of the day, diba? at the end of the day, 
everyone can remember your name, then whoever said anything insignificant about you or said anything negative about you, hmm. they're gonna be easily for, they're they're easily forgotten, right? Hmm. Right? Sabi natin si Rajiv, you, Rajiv, uh, Roswami has a podcast. How many people in the Trinidad has a podcast? Can you tell me? <laughs> None. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Can you tell me how many you go, Rajiv, how many people do you know? Like let's do a Google quick you can do a quick Google search. How many hmm. people in La Trinidad has a podcast? How many people in Baguio has a podcast? A fair sh- a handful. I- I- in my opinion, a handful of people from my circle. But I'm not sure about uh, so, saying La Trinidad. So so Sabinating sa Baguio, Sabinating there are like a hundred podcasters. Yeah. That is versus the entire population of Baguio. Yeah. Ben Ketrinjon. Yeah. So, while other people wanted to play video games, I mean, to each his own, they can yeah. do whatever they want. They can waste their lives or they can waste time complaining on social media. Here yeah. comes you and the rest of other podcasters making use of their time productively. Diba? That's now. Good. That's true. Uh, now, since you're putting out art, you're putting yourself out there in the world, it's the most courageous thing you could ever do. Yeah. Now, the I reason could. why, that's why you have trolls, that's why you have haters, that's why you have bashers, <laughs> is simply because they don't know how to do it. They cannot do it. Sasabihin nila, kung ako gumawa niyan, ganito gagawin ko. Ay, naku, ang pangit naman niyan. Kung ako gumawa niyan. Ganito yeah. ikaw gumawa, pati hindi ikaw ang gumawa. <laughs> so fuck you, shut up. <laughs> it's that simple. It's, it's either you do it or you don't. It's yeah. either you got it or you don't. Yeah, it all revolves back to the same saying that you said. Either you do it, it's powerful stuff. I love it. I love this conversation. This is more about empowering. I, I love how you empower me in this conversation. And uh, I... Uh, I'm not empowering you, bro. Empowering you already mind, have it. Mind, you have mind, it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just that, we all go through the same things. You, <laughs> you, whatever this you're thinking, everyone goes through it. Even I go through it. I hmm. had, I have my moments of doubt. I have hmm. my moments of insecurities. I have my moments wherein I wasn't confident about doing something or or I wasn't confident in making a decision. I, there are a lot of times where I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> it's that. We all go through it. We go all through it. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Uh, coach, uh, before we end this conversation, I mean, mm-hmm. this conversation has been phenomenal. Um, first of all, I hope I get to have you again in, in the Rajiv show and the, pro- yeah, and the coming seasons. Yeah, just let me seasons. know, man. Yeah. yeah, just let me know. In the coming seasons. Um, if someone, uh, who, who, uh, if anyone who's tuning in who, who wants to find you in social media, how would they find you in social media? How they can, how would they connect with you? The, my listeners or anyone who's tuning in. Mm-hmm. But before I say those things, I would like to thank you for having me over on your podcast. Uh, the Rajiv Show is uh, is one of the amazing podcasts out here in the Philippine Podcast Directory. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, very thankful that you you thought of me to be on your show, to be on this podcast episode, and I appreciate it. Now, um, for people, I'm on Facebook. Just look for Coach Franco Rolioda. I'm on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram handle is Franco Rolioda. It's just my name. So it's at Franco Rolioda. Then I have my own podcast. It's called Coach Franco Says. It's on YouTube and on all the audio distribution out there like Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. That's it. Awesome. Awesome. Coach, thank you for having this conversation and thank you so much for carving a time, time bro. to have a conversation with me. I'm honored to having you. And uh, I love this conversation so much. The honor is mine, bro. The honor is mine. Thank you. And for the listeners out there, I hope you've learned a thing or two, a lot of thing about martial arts and things, discipline and life. And I hope something uh, you guys were educated in this conversation. Uh, For those folks who are listening out there, cheers. I will see you in the next episode.